I've received a number of questions from parents, teachers, adoption agencies, and just about anybody else you can think of about how to work with children who have Facebook accounts. We have plenty of really great training on AtomicLearning.com in our 21st Century Skills Collection about Facebook for teachers and students, and more are planned. But I'll share with you the six basic rules that I use with the children in my family and that I work with. This isn't even close to definitive, but it might help get you thinking about how to create your own rules for Facebook. Rule number one. The child we're talking about should be at least 13 years old. I know, trust me, I've heard all the reasons why a kid under 13 believes they should be allowed on Facebook. The bottom line is, aside from the moral, social, and ethical issues at play, Facebook's own rules say that you have to be 13 to use the site. If you allow a child under the age of 13 to create an account on Facebook, you're knowingly violating the terms of the service, and we just don't recommend that. If the child is under 13, check out social networking sites that do cater to younger ages, like Glogster. We've got some great training on Glogster as well, so check that out if you're interested. Rule number two. The computer has to be in a common area, so no laptop in the bedroom, iPod or iPad with a camera on Facebook, or anything like that. After a while, once we've established a pretty good understanding of how to manage their online presence, I relax this rule. But this one is in place until I'm confident they can make good choices without at least a little supervision. Rule number three. We set up the account together. Some tech-savvy parents like to set the account up themselves, but I recommend that you do it together so that you can talk about why you're setting things up the way you are. Facebook accounts change constantly, so even if you are a Facebook user, it's probably been a while since you've seen the initial account setup options. This gives you a chance to talk things over, and communication is always a good thing. Explain things like why you shouldn't put personal information in your account info, or post it. This also has the benefit of making sure that you know the username and password for the account. We can call this Rule 3A. You should always know their login information. If the child changes their password, they need to tell you about it. Rule number four, I am their first friend. Once the account is set up, this is the first thing that I ask them to do on their own account. Note that it is possible to hide certain posts and certain comments from individual friends on Facebook. But, just like any other way that your child communicates with other people, there is a certain level of trust that you have to have to allow them access. Part of rule number four is not abusing your position on the friends list. This means, as tempting as it may be, no posting on their wall or uploading their embarrassing baby pictures and tagging them. This is the digital equivalent of making them wear a big bunny suit to school and giving them a big sloppy kiss in front of their entire class. So resist temptation and let them engage with their friends in a safe way without your interference. Rule number five, keep an eye on their account. Log into their account every now and again just to make sure the password is still valid and then log right back out. Look at their wall posts and who they're friending. As with many of these rules, you can relax this as time goes on, but I wouldn't let this one go altogether, if only to keep up with your child's social life. One big part of this rule is making sure that they're not chatting or friending people they don't know or have never met in person. And the last rule, rule number six, keep communication open. Although it feels a little weird to be watching their account, I'm technically not a lurker because I always feel free to comment in person on what I see on Facebook. If I see a funny wall post, for example, I'll bring it up in conversation. If I see behavior or a friend that I'm concerned about or curious about, I'll ask about it. Even Facebook, with all its security settings, is not 100% private. Although it's scary, Facebook provides a good opportunity to talk about what it means to be a digital citizen and to have an online presence. We can talk about what happens if a friend's account gets hacked, or even their own account. They should understand how important it is that they should come to me whenever something weird or uncomfortable happens. As with most rules, violations are punished according to intent and severity. If I see a post on their wall from their iPod just before bedtime, for example, that's usually just a warning. If I see them friending a bunch of people they don't know, and they don't seem to see anything wrong with that, that punishment is going to be more severe, possibly including me changing their password or suspending their account and effectively grounding them from Facebook for a while. As with classroom instruction, there is no cookie-cutter set of rules that can apply to every child. 
These are rules that I've found to be effective for me, and hopefully they'll help you create some rules of your own that will help keep your child safe, happy, and healthy online. Don't forget to check Atomic Learning for other training on Facebook, Digo, and other social networking tools and technologies.